everybody, and how many folks know that if God is on your side, there's nothing that can come against you, amen? Amen. Amen. If God be for us, who can be against us? Who can separate us from his mighty hand? If God be for us, who can be against us? We can win the battle when before God we stand. Good Goliath stood there boldly, defying God's army. There stood little David, but he did not stand alone. He said, in the name of the Lord, I come against thee. He slew that big old giant with a sling and a stone. If God be for us, who can be against us? Who can separate us from his mighty hand? If God be for us, who can be against us? We can win the battle with for God we stand. Little lions were roaring. Fierce and hungry, Daniel knew the one he served would bring him out. The king cried, Daniel, has that God delivered thee? Daniel said, my Lord has shut the lion's mouth. If God be for us, who can be against us? Who can separate us from his mighty hand? If God be for us, who can be against us? We can win the battle with it for God we stand. If God be for us, who can be against us? Who can separate us from his mighty hand? If God be for us, who can be against us? We can win the battle with it for God we stand. We can win the battle with it for God we stand. Time I travel down a long lonely road. My heart was so heavy, instead I sank low. Then I heard about Jesus. What a wonderful hour! I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out His saving power. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by his wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out, show me the way. Like a bird out of prison that's taken its flight. Like the blind man that God gave back his sight. Like the poor wretched beggar who's found fortune and fame. I'm, I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out through his holy name. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah! I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. How many are free today? Been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah. I'm saved, saved, saved by his wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me the way. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me the way. Amen. 
I saw some of you smiling, so I think you're kind of relating to the music. You're saved, and you're free, and you know it, and you're happy about it. Yes, sir, brother. Amen. I want you to sing with me. Jesus keeps me singing. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have light in my soul for which long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy or my soul like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart let's stand as we sing a uh, southern american folk hymn called wayfaring stranger i'm sure everybody knows it but i love the part that says i'm going there to see my savior to sing his praise forevermore I'm only going over Jordan. I'm only going over home. Amen.
Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed it. Amen.
Very beautiful. Very beautiful. All right. Well, I looked outside just before I made my round here. It is absolutely pouring the rain. I did not notice one person carrying an umbrella with you, so I'm going to just take the liberty and just preach for a while. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we only have a certain amount of umbrellas to get out of here with. Amen. All right. If you have your Bibles with you, open them up to the book of Ezekiel. That's page 881 if you got a Schofield. Ezekiel chapter number 37. Ezekiel chapter number 37. Chapter 37. <clears throat> How many folks have a garden? Raise your hand. How's it doing? Too wet? Well, you need to raise watermelons because they like water. And they'll be luscious, extra luscious this year. <laughs> Amen? All right. The book of Ezekiel, chapter number 37. <clears throat> I've had a blessed week this week. <laughs> God is good. Amen. God is good. Ezekiel said, The hand of the Lord was upon me in verse number one. I like that. Yeah. Hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out, of the, out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Let's bow our hearts. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the beautiful music that we have enjoyed here this morning. Thank you, Lord, that we also know that we're free, we're free. We're free indeed in Jesus today. And God, we know that there's no power that can come against us when God is on our side. And Father, I'm thankful that we have the confidence today of knowing that God is on our side because we belong to you, Lord. And Jesus abides in us and we abide in him. And Father, right now I pray that you will bless this message today to our hearts. I pray you bless me, Lord. And God, I thank you for that, Lord. And uh, I just pray if there's one in our audience today that does not know Christ, I pray that they will know you before the end of this service today. I pray for Christians that are going through a valley of dry bones today, Lord, that they will be refreshed by the Spirit of the Lord here today. Now, Father, have your way. Let your will be done. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. This morning, before I left the house, I knelt beside my couch and I was praying and I was asking God to bless me today. And I said something like this. I said, Lord, I, I give myself to you, God, today. And then it hit me all of a sudden. I think it was the Holy Spirit who said, you don't even belong to yourself. How can you give yourself away to God? God owns you, son. I don't belong to myself. And that brought joy into my soul this morning. Amen. To know that he reminds me all the time of who I am. I belong to him. I'm glad I don't belong to myself because I mess things up. Amen. But he takes care of everything. And I thank God for what he does. He says, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Today's message title was The New Life. Oh, I tell you, friend, I, I just got to tell you a story how God blessed me this week. And it goes all the way back to last summer. As you know, I've mentioned several times, I like to get up in the mornings if I can. And I like to take a two-mile walk. I've got a route all planned out from my sidewalk all the way around out through the neighborhood, down the street and over to another neighborhood. And then I come back and enter my neighborhood and back home. That's two miles for me. Well, I'll tell you what, last year I, I happened to notice at the very edge of our neighborhood, Dan, there was a tree standing there, and that thing was just dead as 4 o'clock, as they say. Well, I looked at that tree, and I just kept looking at it and studying it every time I'd go by there. And then uh, one day I saw the lady who lives right there at that first uh, house where the property is, and I said something to her like, good morning or good afternoon, my name is Tim, and she said her name was Candy. And I said, well, you know what, it looks like that tree right there is just as dead as it can be. And she says, I couldn't agree more. 
And so I just went on with my day and I started taking more walks through that neighborhood, uh, going through there every day and I saw her out there again and in the meantime I had been thinking, well maybe, you know, she lives alone, I noticed and I thought, well maybe she would like to have that tree cut down. So I went up to her there one day when she was out in the yard and I said, uh, Candy, I said, do you remember me? I'm Tim. And she said, yeah. I said, uh, what I would uh, stopping here for? Uh, you know, we talked about that tree there being dead and I said, uh, I have a chainsaw and I said, if you would like for me to, uh, Dan, I said, I'll be glad to come down here and cut that tree down for you and chop it up in little pieces and get rid of it for you. She says, well, here's the thing with that, Tim. She says, the HOA says it's on my property, and I say that it's on community property, and we're in some sort of a little uh, battle right now over whose tree it is and whose responsibility it is to cut it down. Well, let me tell you something, dear friend. That tree wasn't over 10 feet tall, I guess, uh, but it was just dead as it could ever be. Well, the winter time goes by, and the spring has come, and the tree is still standing. So whatever the deadlock is, the tree has won out. Amen? <laughs> Well, I went walking by there again uh, just this week, and uh, <laughs> I went walking by that tree, and I walked around through the other neighborhood, and I come back by, and, and uh, I just walked by that tree like nothing, and it hit me. I stopped, and I turned around, and I looked at that tree, and that tree had leaves on it. I started to walk away, and then the Holy Spirit said, you better turn around and look at this again. And I went back, and I had to just investigate. Is this the same tree? And I looked and there wasn't anything cut. And I looked at this tree and praise God, it's the same tree. And I don't know what's coming over that tree, but it's got leaves all over it this year, dear friend. And I want to tell you something. A uh, closer investigation and looking at that tree, uh, even some of the bark has even rotted off of that tree and, fall off and fell off of there onto the ground. But that tree's got leaves on it today. And I'll tell you the truth, I've got my cell phone in there, and I stopped by there this morning on the way out and zoomed right in, and I took a picture of it. That tree's got leaves on it. But I can tell you, I'm not a botanist, but I can tell you that that tree was dead. And my neighbor confirmed it was dead. And the HOA apparently believes it's dead too because they didn't want to do anything with it. But I don't know what's going on there, but all I know is that there's been new life for some reason or another breathed into that tree. And I stood there and I looked at that tree. And then all of a sudden, it came to me. God said this to me, standing there at that tree, Tim, I can resurrect what I want and who I want. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now this, is, this could be a two-part message here today because there's another part of this message here I need to share with you. <laughs> I don't know what it's been, what's been going on. I haven't said a word because we usually talk about things like this. But I've been going through a little bit of a dry spell. I've been struggling trying to get my messages. I've been going to the study, sitting there saying, God, I got nothing. So you better have something to give me. But I've been, it's been like pulling hen's teeth, I'll tell you, trying to get a message and praying, God, give me something that, I, that the folks are going to need. Because I want to I wanna give them something refreshing. I want somebody to walk out of Graceway Fellowship being blessed of the Lord. And God stood there. I stood there and God said, Tim, <laughs> I still talk to you. <laughs> he brought me to an old dead tree that he brought back to life just so he could talk to me. When you go home today, pull in there and look at that tree. It's the very first tree in the neighborhood. I turned around and I put my hands in the air and I looked up to heaven and I said, thank you God that you still talk to me. <laughs> Woo! Amen! Brother, when you're going through a dry spell, there's nothing like getting some refreshment from God. Amen. I don't know if anybody here has ever gone through a dry spell, but I had my dry spell, and God, God preserved a tree, let it be dead, wouldn't let nobody cut it down just so he could take his preacher boy, walk him by it one day, and get his attention by the Holy Ghost of God, and say, look what I brought back to life. Tim, I can bring anything I want to back to life. Amen. Glory to God. Woo! I was a dead man, but God brought me back to life. You was a dead man. You was a dead woman, but God brought you back to life. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Woo, man, I tell you. 
I'm just so thankful that God showed that to me. And man, I want to tell you, talk about getting some spring in your step, heading back to the house. Woo! I was walking down the sidewalk. I thought I ought to shout, and I thought, well, maybe I'll scare the neighbors, but I got a little shout out anyway, amen. And then uh, I just felt like I could take off running the rest of the way back to my house. Glory to God. Man, when God excites you, dear friend, when God brings something back to life, dear loved one, oh, it, it'll put a spring in your step. It'll refresh your soul, amen. Ezekiel went to the valley of dry bones and God gave him a vision of an army that had been slaughtered there. And there they laid. All oh, the flesh had come off their bones. There was nothing left but bones. And God said, Son of man, can, uh, can these bones have life? He said, God, you know. And buddy, that's the truth. God knows. Amen. And God breathed it back in there on them. And they stood up a whole army. Amen. Whew. Brother, when you're down, God can stand you up. Amen. <laughs> Woo, I just had to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Whew, I'll tell you something. I, I've gone on a lot about these preachers wanting you to plant seed money and plant seeds and all that. I want to tell you something. <laughs> God got me back. He planted the seed of joy in my heart, and he resurrected that seed at 9.58 a.m. this past uh, Friday morning. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let me tell you about the new life. If you're saved today, you've got a new life. If you're born again today, you've got a new life. And I'll just tell you that I'm so happy to be saved. I'm so happy to be born again. I'm so glad that I'm a new creation in Jesus. I'm glad that it's a miracle that the Son of God has come to live his life in and through me. When I received the gift of eternal life, I was. it is the very life of Jesus. It is the very life of Jesus. It is the very life of Jesus that has come to live and abide in me today. And he continues. I said he continues. He never leaves. He won't ever leave. He promised he'd never leave because God cannot lie to himself and God lives in me amen what a glorious life it is to be saved amen glory to God oh don't you like what I'm saying today ain't this good news isn't this the best thing you ever heard Woo-hoo! well glory amen it is the best thing you'll ever hear dear friend he has made me alive in him Woo! amen well, I tell you, there's not anything worth mentioning more today than Jesus Christ, the Son of God. How that he loves you and how that he loves me. Amen. I am born of God and I got news for you. The evil one cannot touch me. Amen. I am holy and without blame before him in love. I have the mind of Christ. I have the peace of God that passes all understanding. I am blessed with grace. I am blessed with faith. I am blessed with love. I am blessed with hope. I am a spirit being made alive unto God. Amen. I'm a, I'm a believer and the light of the gospel shines in my mind. Amen. Amen. Well, glory to God. Some of you are happy about what you hear and others are scared to death. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. It just gets better. I'm more than a conqueror through him who loves me. I'm an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. I'm a partaker of his divine nature. And boy, do I like that one. I am a partaker of his divine nature. Woo! Amen! Man, Jesus Christ lives in me. Amen! He could choose to live in a tree if he wants to. He could choose to live wherever he wants to. He can choose to resurrect who he wants to. Amen. I've been resurrected. Oh, when he went to Calvary, I was crucified with Jesus on the cross. When he was buried, I was buried in the tomb with Jesus there. Oh, we laid there for three days. But when the sun rose on that third day, Jesus rose from the dead and brought me out with him. Amen. Hallelujah. I've been resurrected. Amen. Glory to God. Brother, the New York Times don't have news this good. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I belong to God. I am the righteousness of God in Jesus. I am part of a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a purchased people. I am an ambassador of Christ. I belong to God and I'm accepted. Amen. 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 I'm accepted. I have a new life. I have a new life that's eternal, amen. 
I can breathe, I can see, I can feel, and I can rejoice. I'm an overcomer in Jesus. And this, what, this is what it means to have life. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ has taken Tim who was born a lost sinner living in a fallen world because of Adam and he breathed the breath of life into me and when he did the old man inside of me died and he resurrected the new man that lives inside me today and that new man oh you're looking at a man right here this morning take a good look at this man right here here's my side views take a look Take a look at this man right here because you're looking at a man that has no condemnation toward him. Yeah. You're looking at a man who has no judgment toward him. Yeah. That's because of one reason, dear loved one. I am in Christ Jesus, amen. Yeah. And Jesus is in me. I'm in the vine and, and I'm growing. I'm a branch on the vine, amen. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. Glory to God. What a savior we have, ladies and gentlemen. We just need to recognize it, amen. <laughs> Whew. I'm a man living in the present but I'm a man who's living in eternity also oh I tell you God's good God is good how many folks agree with that that God's good who in the right mind who would not want this kind of life amen who would not want this new life I'm talking about today well you might have guessed it <laughs> I love looking at nature time to just get beside myself here I love to look at nature you know why I like to look at nature it's because God made it yes. <laughs> I have to wonder about that tree in my neighborhood one day one day way back yonder somewhere that tree was just a seed that was thrown in the ground <clears throat> it had the right amount of sunlight that come along and bathed it it had the right amount of rain to come along and just uh, uh, put, provided moisture for it. One day it popped up out of the ground and became a tree. <laughs> oh, that tree just as it grew every day, the sun just would base down upon it. Then the clouds would roll in and God would feed it with some more rain and that, and that tree just drank all the water it wanted. It drank all the water it wanted. Yeah. It never, it, it, it wasn't drowning, man. It was just opening up its mouth and those roots, they were just a, oh, I like that water. It's sweet water. It's the kind of water God makes, amen. amen. And then God sent that sunshine and that tree, it just grow right up. It became a tree. Well, you know, people, I'm sure, Dan, we, we don't know it, but uh, I, I'm sure that when those little, old, it's a redbud tree, did I tell you that? And overnight, you know how those redbuds, they just pop out and you get up in the morning, there, oh, look at there, what happened? You know, I'm sure people drive out of that neighborhood and they say, boy, look at that, look at that beautiful tree, how pretty that is. I like redbuds, I've got them in my yard. <clears throat> so, then one day something changed. Something changed one day. It began to look weak. And soon it became diseased. And after a period of time, it began to lose its bark of protection to the elements. Later, <coughs> excuse me, later, it was declared dead. And then how to cut it down and bury it and chop it up and put it away became a topic of debate. To look upon it was not even pleasant to look upon anymore. It, did, it never changed its appearance for all four seasons. It just remained the same. It became a dried out, brittle, ready to fall over, ready to be cut down looking tree. Dear friend, let me share something with you. You don't have to be a Christian very long before you begin to hear stories of people who used to be giants in the faith. Giants in the church. Well, these are the people that used to lead their homes uh, in, as spiritual leaders, and they used to be Sunday school teachers, and they were deacons and even preachers. They, met, they, they could have been, you know, like Ward Cleaver or Andy Taylor. You know, they were just that kind of a guy, you know, just, just a real sweet person. They loved their families, and they were faithful in the things that the church has called faithful. <laughs> but then one day something happened. They began to get weak. Their concern for faithfulness just sort of fell by the wayside. And they were not as pleasant to be around. You ever talk to an unpleasant Christian? Boy, I hate those people. <laughs> if there's anything to hate. Unpleasant Christians, man, they can be brutal. They can be cruel. They can be hateful. Amen, sister. Talking by experience there? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Pecking on you, Miss Patty. <clears throat> One day something happened. 
They felt as though they were dry and just ready to break. It didn't matter how good God was, they wasn't going to change. You know, there's men in the Bible just like this. Moses, as you recall, after he was rescued as, from, as, as a baby, he was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter, and he, he was raised in a life of royalty. But he had a setback one day when he killed an Egyptian. You remember that story? That's what I call the something happened syndrome. <laughs> he fled for his life, and he wound up becoming a shepherd of sheep. And then one day he saw a bush on fire, and there's something about that bush. It was not consumed. When he approached the bush, God spoke to him and said, Moses, Moses, I got a new life for you. <laughs> the new life that he had would lead him to become one of the greatest men the Bible has ever mentioned. And Moses was brought into a new life of leadership and he was used mightily of the Lord. Amen? A couple of weeks ago I referred back over to Elijah the prophet. Elijah was one of the greatest pre uh, preachers in Israel. God was using him like no other prophet in that day. And he went, when he was challenged by the false prophets, it's as if Elijah looked at him and said, bring it on. Well, they brought it on, and Elijah brought it on too. Amen? Elijah brought it on with the power of God so hot and so strong that the, the God's fire came down and licked up, the, uh, licked up the altar and all the water that was around it. But then something happened. Elijah got the news that his life was going to be taken by Jezebel. So what did he do? He ran. That's the something happened syndrome that happened to Elijah. And then he got out there in the wilderness and he complained to God that he was the only prophet serving him. And God gently encouraged him that he had 7,000 other prophets that were serving him too. At that moment then, Elijah realized he had a new life in his ministry. Amen? Yes. Brother, there's nothing like getting the message from God that you've you, you've been reinstated. Yeah. You've got a new life. You've got new breath. You've got new blood. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. There's another story in the Bible about a father who had two sons. One of them come and said, give me everything that's mine. I want it right now. And the father said, here you go, son. And the son took it. And the Bible said he went out into a far country. That's the something change syndrome that happened to the prodigal son. He went to a far country. And there in that far country, well, he lost his morals. He lost his integrity, lost his morality. He wound up living in a pig pen. And then he came to himself and he said, You know, even the servants in my father's house, they're living way better than me. Maybe I should go back and tell my dad, I'm really sorry. And if I could just be a servant in your house, I'd be happy with that. But you know what? The father had something else in mind. He had something better planned for that son. When the son got home, there was a robe of righteousness there waiting for him to put on. And then he had a ring to put on his finger. And the father ordered that the fatted calf be slaughtered. And they had a big feast. The son came home. Listen to me. The son came home to a new life prepared by his father. Yep. Amen? Yep. We've all got a new life prepared by our father. Yep. Amen? Oh, dear loved one. <laughs> Peter is another one of these men. He was, he was faithful to Jesus. He was so faithful that he even told Jesus, I'll die for you. And Jesus said, the cock's going to crow three times and you'll deny me. So we know the story, how that Peter denied Jesus. That was the something that changed for Peter. Peter left in shame. He was broken. He felt like he was a real loser. <laughs> and after Jesus' resurrection from the dead, he was standing on the seashore and he called out to the disciples who had been out fishing all night. He said, children, have you any meat? I bet Jesus was southern. <laughs> They looked to the shore, and they realized it was the Lord. Peter jumped into the water and swam as fast as he could to the seashore. And at that moment, Jesus gave him new life and reinstated Peter to the ministry. Amen? <clears throat> Let me tell you something. No matter who you are, Christian friend, man or lady, you're going to experience the something changed syndrome somewhere along the way. And when that happens, if you'll keep your eyes open, don't expect an earthquake, don't expect a clasp of thunder, but just listen for that still small voice that says, go back and look at that tree. <laughs> Swim to the shore because it's the Lord. The voice that says servants are living better than you are right now. 
The voice that says, I have others that have felt like this right now, but they are serving me. The voice that says, take your shoes off because the ground that you're on is holy ground and I want to talk to you. Yeah. Let me tell you, when that happens, you're about to have yourself a God moment like Tim Roller did on Friday at 9.58 a.m., amen? You yeah. just want to jog down the sidewalk and lift your hands. And brother, one of the, I, I'm just kind of getting over it. I, I just don't even care right now what the neighbors are saying. If you hear something going on, don't call the law. It's really all right. I'm really in my right mind. I'm just having a God moment, amen? Yeah. Amen. Brother, it is good to hear from heaven, amen? Yeah. Hmm. When you realize that God still speaks to you, even though you're in your driest desert, you'll look, to, you'll look up to him and you'll worship him. Amen. I couldn't help but to, somewhere along the way in this message look up that word worship. Thank you, Holy Spirit. James Strong says there's three definitions to the word worship. One of them is this. It means to kiss the hand of the one, uh, kiss the hand of one and a token of reverence. I got to thinking about my experience there standing there at that tree and how the Lord came all over me. It was like all the way home I was kissing the hand of God, worshiping Him. Yeah. Brother, I don't care. The Pope in Rome, you can, you, can, you, can, you, can, you can quote me on this, the Pope in Rome is going to die and go to hell as long as he has people wanting to kiss his ring. Yeah. That's right. Amen? Amen? Brother, I ain't worshiping nobody. I ain't worshiping no angel. I'm worshiping the one true God. Amen. 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 Glory to God. And I want to tell you something else too. There ain't no worship practice time that can top that. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Worship practice. <laughs> Let me just say something to you. When, you. when you know that you need new life, Here's what you need to do. Remember the miracles of God. Remember that he took an army of soldiers who were killed and they were in a valley of dry bones and God said, Son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, Lord, you alone know. Ezekiel was told to prophesy to those bones and to hear the word of the Lord. Mm, boy, that jumped out at me. Faith cometh by hearing. Yeah. Hearing of the Word of God. Yeah. Man, I tell you what, you get yourself subjected to the Word of God, dear friend. When you, when you feel like you're in a dry place, when you're in a desert, when you're thirsty for something on your tongue, when your tongue's are sticking to the roof of your mouth, spiritually speaking, I'm talking about, when you need to get a hold of heaven, subject yourself to the Word of God. Amen. And the Word of God will refresh your soul like streams in a desert. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. There's nothing like the Word of God. I want to tell you, God's concerned about His Word. It's His Word that changes the life and the heart of mankind. Amen? Nothing else will do it. Oh, let me go back. Worship practice ain't going to change your life. Planting seeds ain't going to change your life. Getting baptized ain't going to change your life. Joining Grace Wave Fellowship ain't going to change your life. Playing a banjo or a guitar or a fiddle, that ain't going to change your life. It ain't, nothing's going to change your life but the Word of God, amen. And the preaching of the gospel, amen, is what resurrects the soul of man. Glory to God. Remember the miracles of God. I tell you what, I, I'm set on this. I don't care what anybody says. I believe that God breathed life back into that tree in my neighborhood. I am not kidding you. <laughs> God breathed life back into that, into that uh, tree. And he did it to show this preacher a few things about God and about myself. Oh, he still cares enough yeah. about me. <laughs> he still cares enough about me to speak to me in a still small voice. Amen. When preachers have fallen, many will say, well, they can't be in the ministry again. But God brings life back to that ministry. When a man goes to prison for a crime, many will say he'll never be the same again. Well, that's true. God lets me live. I plan to visit a man tomorrow morning at 930 who's Got a 40-year sentence in prison. While he's been incarcerated, God has opened the doors for this man to preach the gospel to dozens of inmates. This man is not the same because God has given him new life. Amen. Somebody said, if you take a bunch of fleas, <clears throat> you place them into a container and you put a lid on it, 
those leaves are going to jump and they're going to try to get out of that box. They'll just hit that lid so many times and they'll finally just give up. They'll quit trying to escape. They say that you can even go over there and you can take the lid off of that box and those fleas will all stay in the box because they've got it in their mind. They can't escape. They can't escape. You know, sometimes when people have failures in their life, they're like those fleas. They let other people push them down. Yeah. And they say, you can't do this anymore. Yeah. You, you, God's not going to honor what you're doing anymore. Man, I'd like to know what book you're reading to tell me that God's not going to honor me anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You might have tried to get out a few times. You might have hit the lid a few times. Well, let me tell you something, dear loved one. The lid's coming off. Yeah. The lid's coming off. It's time to try. And by the way, you're not created to live contained and to be stuck. Amen? You're not lived to be contained and be stuck. Let me just share this with you. God has mercy for every mistake. Amen? God has restoration for every failure, a new beginning for every loss, a comeback for every setback. What he's promised is still on the way to you. Whatever God's promised to you, I don't know what it is. Whatever God spoke to your heart about, it's still on the way. Amen? Amen? Yes. Amen. That tree in my neighborhood, it was brought back to life to show a preacher who was taking a walk, who had been thinking that God was silent, that he could still speak to me. When Christians have had something happen to them, there will be other people that will be quick to criticize. Many will even turn their backs on you. They will not offer any helpful comments. Mostly the comments you'll get will be condemning and hurtful. I never will forget, I've shared my story with you when I was out of church for 10 years. I was out in my front yard on a Sunday morning just having coffee, minding my own business in my own yard. When a church bus goes driving by, pulled into the neighborhood across the street from me, they slowed down, and I could see them looking out the window, and they put on the brakes, and finally some smart aleck said, Hello, brother! He was being critical because they knew me. And they felt like I ought to be in their church, I guess. They don't know what I was going through. Right. You don't know, and they didn't know what I'd been dealing with. They didn't know how many times I jumped up and hit the roof of that box. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm? They didn't know that they were looking at a tree that was feeling dead inside. Yeah. Oh, but I'll tell you something, friend. God brought a tree back to life. Yeah. <laughs> I graduated from Bible college. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Glad I wasn't sitting in a chair in some classroom somewhere. Amen. God brought me through what he wanted me to go through. God brought me through what he wanted me to go through. God put me in places where he could teach me what he wanted to teach me. God set me aside because God cares about me. God is concerned about me. And God took me and placed me exactly where he wanted, to be, wanted me to be at the very precise moment so that I would learn some things about God. And at 9.58 a.m. Friday morning was another one of those times. Amen. Woo! Amen. I don't know that I'm ever going to be able to graduate Bible college. <laughs> I ain't trying to graduate, amen? Because I like the learning part of it, amen? I enjoy the studying part of it. I enjoy when God puts his arm around me and says, let's go take a walk. <laughs> Woo! Have you ever had that? You ever had God go walk with you? Oh, man, if you haven't, you need to do it, amen? So those comments, they'll mostly be condemning and hurtful. <clears throat> it's really amazing to me how I've seen this happen in many, many circles. Sometimes broken people don't even want to leave their houses at certain times of the day until they know it's safe. Yeah. Man? It's kind of like the lady at Jacob's Well, isn't it? She stayed in the house until all the other ladies got their water. and She thought they would be gone for the day, and then she, oh, she goes out there. Well, whoop, to her surprise, there was somebody there waiting on her. Turned out this person's sole purpose <laughs> was to meet her there. <laughs> Woo! Amen. <laughs> meet me there. Meet me there. Amen. Yeah. Well, glory. She had a setback in her life. But boy, did she have a huge comeback. Amen. She went to the well to get some water to sustain her life. But she left there with the water of life. Amen? Amen. 
You might feel like you're getting weaker by the day. Nothing's going right. People turning against you. It's so bad you feel like that tree I talked about where maybe the bark is starting to fall off. You feel like you have no protection anymore. All your defenses, they're completely gone and you even feel vulnerable. You just hold on. There's a few things that you need to remember. You remember that you belong to God. Lord reminded me of that this morning when I was praying, God, I give myself to you today. <laughs> Son, you don't even own yourself. I own you. Yeah. Then, God, you take what you own and please use it to your glory. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Use it to your glory. You get glory today. He lives inside of you. He has breathed the breath of life into you. Even And remember, his, even his only begotten son faced duress and poor circumstances. He was even crucified and buried. But then one morning, right about sunup, some new breath came into him and he arose from the dead. Amen? As I mentioned earlier, today's Pentecost Sunday. It's been 50 days since we celebrated the Resurrection Sunday. It was on this day that the apostles were, they were in the upper room they were waiting, as they had been instructed, waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. And he came and sat upon them as cloven tongues. You know what the real story of Pentecost is? Let me tell you. It's not about speaking the different languages. It's not even about the interpretation of the languages. But the real story of Pentecost is that that's the day when the Holy Spirit of God, when God himself, the life of God, came and lived in man. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's the story. That's the miracle. That's the glory of Pentecost. Amen? Whew, brother, I don't care what language you speak in, <laughs> but it's got to be about the living of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen? Glory to God. The Holy Spirit came and lived in man. Before this all had happened, Jesus had been crucified, and his disciples were hiding out thinking they're going to be the next ones killed. I'm sure they felt defeated. I'm sure that they even felt, boy, all was in vain. But something happened. A good thing happened. All of a sudden, in a closed room, Jesus appeared. Amen? I wonder if they felt like that was their tree. Amen? <laughs> so you talk about having new life in your ministry. You talk about giving new life to your spiritual life. Is when Jesus shows up. What appeared uh, was dead was now breathing new life. I'm amazed as to how God works in my life. I really don't consider myself to be anything notable. There's a lot of preachers that's got bigger names than I'll ever have, and that's okay with me. I am completely satisfied. Take a look at me. Another side view here, another side view here, and the front view. You take a good look at me and know this. I am completely happy. I'm completely satisfied with who I am. I have, I have found uh, the peace of the Holy Spirit speaking to me and saying, God made you just like you yeah. are. And I am who I am. I will always be who I am. I'm not going to try to change any of that. I'm just going to, I'm going to enjoy my life being me. <laughs> Amen? I'm going to enjoy my life being me. Me and God, we have a lot of, we have a lot of good times together. Amen. When we feel like we're having a setback, God shows back, he shows up with a new life. The setback the tree was having, listen to this, the setback that the tree was having had a huge comeback for itself and it also inspired my life. You see that? The tree who had a setback had a huge comeback and its comeback was inspiring to me. Yeah. So what I want to say here, you are inspiring somebody today. Yeah. Your life. Your spiritual life inspires somebody. Yes. You may not think, you may think I'm totally insignificant, but you are inspiring somebody today. Yes. When people look at you, they're saying, man, Dean Garrett, he's got it going on. Doug Thompson, what a man. Manny Early, what a lady. Yeah. <sighs> You're inspiring somebody. You know why that is? Holy Spirit of God is bearing fruit in your life. Amen. He's giving you new 
life. That's what God does. Sometimes God will wait on a purpose. Not only so that you'll know that it was His favor, but so that nobody else will be able to deny the goodness of God in your life. <laughs> the critics and the naysayers, isn't it true? They're a dime a dozen. 80% hmm. of people will tell you what you can't do after failure has happened. Amen? Yeah. Oh, haven't you seen that in the news? Some preacher has a failure. Press turns on him. Preachers turn on him. Other preachers are kind of uh, happy about it because they think, now I can get part of his congregation. Maybe I can get part of that money that they're sending to that ministry have not been sent to mine. It goes on. Eighty yeah. percent will tell you that you can't do that anymore. I said, I said, let's cut down the tree. I have a chainsaw. She said, well, I'm in an argument with the HOA now as to whose tree that it is and who's going to cut it down. So God put a standstill moment on all of that, and eventually everybody lost interest in the dead tree. Eighty percent said, get rid of it, it's dead. But God was the twenty percent who said, I can fix it. And I'm going to. And I have a reason for fixing it. Amen. <laughs> so let me ask you. Do you need some new life today? Have you been broken? Are you going through something? <sighs> I'm just determined as I can be in my spirit that God is able and God is ready and God is willing to breathe new life into your situation and mine. Come on up, singers. God has not forgotten about you. I believe in all my heart what God has promised is still on the way. Amen? There's good days ahead. What God started, He's going to finish. And I really like this part. God always has the final say. Amen? God always has the final say. I hope you believe it today. And I'd like to ask you, would you like to have victory? Would you like to have victory in Jesus today. Why don't we stand to our feet. Let's sing this song. Victory in Jesus today. <coughs> I heard an old, old story. our heads for just a moment. Let's bow our hearts and let's pray. I just want to know if there be somebody here this morning maybe you need to be saved. Maybe everything I've talked about here this morning, you're like man, that sounds so exciting to have a new life, to have the spirit of the living God living in my heart today. Tim makes it sound so good. Well, I'm glad you feel that way because it really is that good and I'd want you to experience it today. If you're without Christ Jesus, God has made it so simple to be saved today. He simply says, if you'll just call upon His name, He will save you, dear friend. When you say, Lord, what you're saying there is that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that He came from heaven and He died on a cross for all of your sins and He was buried in a tomb. And then on the third day, according to the Scriptures, God raised His Son from the dead. That's what you're saying when you call Him Lord. And if you'll just simply say, Lord, save me, Jesus will do it. For the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I'd like for you to have that opportunity today. Right there at your seat this morning. Right there, right where you stand. Right where you sit. 
right where you're at in the very spot you're living right now, you can bow your heart and say, God, be merciful to me. Come into my life and save me. If you'll do that this morning, loved one, I guarantee you, according to the scriptures, Jesus Christ will come into your life and you'll be saved. You'll be born again. Maybe you're a Christian here this morning and you've been going through battles and maybe what I've said here this morning you can identify with about having setbacks and maybe you're going through one now. Maybe you're walking through a valley of dry bones today. You don't have to stay there. God told Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones. Can new breath be breathed into them? Ezekiel said, Lord, you know. And God showed up. <laughs> God showed up for me on Friday morning and I felt like I just had new life. I want you to experience that today if you're a Christian and you're going through some battles now. I told you this morning, God spoke to my heart at that couch when I said, I give myself to you. I don't even belong to myself to give myself away. Remind yourself of that today. You're God's child. You're His. He's, he cares. He's concerned. He's just waiting, and he's going to pour a blessing out on you. Look to him today. Father, I pray for Christians right now that might be going through trials and tribulations. Lord, give them the courage and the boldness now to just look to Calvary today. You tell us to come to your throne boldly. So, Father, I pray today that you give every Christian confidence and courage right now. Lord, we just ask you today to just lift the burden, fill up the water pots today. Bring new life. Put a spring in, in their step today. Encourage their hearts, Lord. Give them the answer they seek today, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Let's sing that last verse, if you know it, or we can sing the first verse. Let's...